uh, turn the committee over to our vice chair for the, uh, for the really interesting and exciting business of the day. I want to provide a few remarks to you uh, as, I, uh, as I prepare to exit stage right from the organization. Uh, a couple of thank yous, first of all, to, uh, to all of my friends who have been helpful and supportive of me over the years. I want to say thank you to our colleagues and staff. Uh, a big thank you as well. I can tell you, uh, having worked in, in around this organization for the past five years, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you, have a, you don't know how lucky you are super qualified and staff who works at the party today and one that uh, that worked at the party when I took it over. Uh, credit to Chairman Bennett. Uh, Ohio Republican uh, operatives litter uh, Washington and Ohio and, uh, and Republican national politics and it's uh, uh, the individuals that serve at the party today will have their opportunities as well to, uh, to have an impact on national elections uh, soon enough. Uh, and to all of Ohio Republicans, uh, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity to have served you over the last three years as your chairman. I want to take some of you back to January 16th of 2009. I know some of you weren't on the committee. But that was the day I got elected chairman of the party. And it's, and it's not all that interesting and exciting for many of you, but I mean, it was for me. But I want you to think about where we were as a party. We were, on the, we were just coming off the heels of what was a disastrous 2008 election. And we were four days from swearing in Barack Obama as our president. And many people nationally and many people certainly here in Ohio were raising serious doubts and questions about our party and would we be able to not just come back, but would we be able to survive. And as I stand here today, I'm proud to tell you, uh, we've survived and we've thrived. And it's a testament to, it's a testament to the, the political environment, candidly, that the, that the opposition gave us in 2010, but more importantly, it's a testament to the conservative candidates that, that came out and wanted to run, that came out with a conservative message and, and won. Uh, it's a testament to the grassroots support, the tremendous grassroots support that we saw uh, from, from groups across the state, groups across the country, uh, who, uh, who helped change the political dynamic in 2010, and a little bit of credit goes to uh, to the staff and the infrastructure of the Ohio Republican Party. All of us working together took advantage of that great political environment and gave us what was arguably the greatest year in the history of the Republican Party here in the state of Ohio. And we are seeing the fruits of that labor today with conservative leaders in Washington and conservative leaders in Columbus making an impact on public policy. And once again, driving home the fact that elections do have consequences. As the President reminded us in Oh, middle of 2009, elections have consequences. They do, sir. And what we're seeing is we are reaping the fruits of our labor and the benefits of winning those elections in 2010. And now as, as we look forward to 2012, the pieces are in place. The pieces are in place for us to do well in Ohio and, and for us to do well nationally uh, in, in November's 2000, November of 2012. And it's our job to make sure that we get about doing that business. There are 750 Republicans on the ballot this fall who are counting on us, who are counting on us to lead, to nurture, to support, to, do, to, to help them across the goal line. That's hundreds of countywide candidates. That's three Supreme Court candidates and Justices Cuff O'Donnell and Judge Kennedy. We have 13 members of Congress to reelect. We have, we have majorities in the House and the Senate that we need to reelect. We need to make Rob Portman the senior U.S. Senator from the state of Ohio by electing Josh Mandel and beating Chair Brown. And it's time for us to get behind Mitt Romney as the, the, the nominee uh, of our party and make sure that we focus our, our sights on taking back the White House. We can do that, ladies and gentlemen. I have no doubt about it. But we have to do one important thing, and that is we have to put aside the differences and the rifts that exist within this party. And that's part of what is going on here today. I want you to look around. I want you to look around at the people who sit beside you, the people who are in front of you and behind you. I want you to look at the people who are along the wall, the back of the room, and in the front of the room. The people in this room are not your political enemies. The people in this room are not your political adversaries. The people in this room are not your political opponents. Our political enemies, our political adversaries, our political opponents are the people who want to continue to support and advocate for the policies of the president that you and I know deep down in our heart are wrong for this country. 
Don't lose sight. Don't lose sight of that. They are the political, the political enemies. And the sooner that each of us can come to grips with that, the better off we'll be as a party, the better off our state will be, and candidly, the better off our country will be. Because there are Republicans across the state, there are Republicans across this country, and literally people across the world who are watching what this organization does going forward. And so our job remains what I think it has always been. Apparently I'm done. <laughs> Not soon enough for some of you, I guess. Our job remains what I think it has always been. The candidate's job is to inspire. The candidate's job is to inspire people to take some action. And some people are going, they agree with me again, some people are going to be inspired by what Mitt Romney has to say and we have to capture them and we make sure that we, that we, that we put that inspiration to good use. But we know there's a, there's a bunch of people in this, in this state and across this country who are going to be inspired to defeat Barack Obama. I don't care candidly what inspiration motivates somebody. What we have to do as a party is turn that inspiration into action. That's what we do. That's who we are. That's what we have signed up for. And so it's our job to turn the inspiration, regardless of how, where it comes from, into some action. That action is a, a Facebook post, a tweet, a nudge of somebody at your place of worship or at the, at the card game. Uh, it's, it's, it's talking to your friends and neighbors because there's nobody more powerful to your friends and neighbors as an advocate than you. You are more important than any 30-second and more powerful than any 30-second soundbite, any 30-second TV ad with your, with your friends and family. And so it's our job to turn that inspiration into action with a yard sign, a Facebook post, a tweet, an email, a nudge of somebody at a, at a club or social event, uh, a small check or a big check, and then ultimately, and most important, a vote. If we do that, ladies and gentlemen, if we focus on those things, we will, we will be successful. Each of us has to have a, a, a message, and we have to be able to bring voice to what the fight is about. You all have to figure out if you're, if, you're, if you're in an elevator and you've got 25 seconds to talk to somebody who, who isn't as involved in politics as you are, you've got to have 25 second speech, an elevator speech, to, to tell somebody why we need to make a change in the White House. Figure out what your speech is. Make it yours. I know what mine is. I've got examples. 22 and a half million Americans who are unemployed or under as a result of the policies of this president making them worse. Five trillion dollars. The president has spent five trillion more dollars in his three and a half years in office than we have, as taxpayers, have sent him. We're on the we're about to spend more on debt service as a nation than we are on national defense. We spend forty three cents of every dollar goes onto a credit card that future generations of Americans who aren't born yet are going to have to pay back. And I've had people tell me, "What the why? What's the big deal about forty three cents?" You know what? Well, what's the right answer? 53, 63, 73 cents. Think about it in terms of your own lives. How many of you, how many of you could live your life putting 43 cents of every dollar on a credit card with no plan to pay it back? Before off, before too awful long, that that financial plan threatens the freedom and the security of your family. The president, the policies of this president are threatening the freedom and security of this country. They're threatening the future of this country. It's, and it's incumbent upon us, as arguably the battleground state, to make sure that we come together, we do everything we possibly can to carry the state for our nominee, and do what we can to make sure that Barack Obama is a one-term president. Ladies and gentlemen, as I leave here today, I commit to you that I will stand beside you in that effort. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. Most importantly, thank you for what you're going to do to carry Ohio for our nominee. Thank you.